just wanted to make a video talking about the endorphins shuttle control which is a MIDI to CC converter and in my opinion it's kind of the ultimate MIDI to CC converter for use with sensory percussion because it has 16 channels which are all completely arbitrary and by that I mean you can assign them to anything. Using the web editor um, you can see this list is quite exhaustive and so many of these functionalities play really nicely with sensory percussion. We're just going to hit some of the highlights and the basic uses that I use often. If you want to use sensory percussion to play a synth that speaks control voltage, you're going to need some way of translating MIDI from sensory percussion into CV. So that's what this module is doing. I have this configuration set up with the outputs and we'll go through all or most of these with a pretty simple patch going. I'm just using the Moog DFAM as a really simple voice and instead of using its internal triggering and stuff uh, I'm just using a DC offset from Maths to open up the VCA on the DFAM and then I'm running that output into another VCA where I can just control the volume so we can hear it there as just a drone. One cool feature in shuttle control that can replace uh, some patching or setup on the computer side, it has a built-in attack sustain release envelope. And that's what I have set up on channel one here. And it does require, as stated in the manual, two CCs. CC73 controls the attack time and CC72 controls the release time. And in sensory percussion, I just set up those CCs and I have velocity mapped to CC72 so we can control our release time. So if I play a short, it's a, you can see this light here is pretty short. And then as I play harder, I have a nice little decay. So we could patch that straight into our VCA. And just like that, with only one output of shuttle control and a VCA, we already have a voice going. Typically, the way you would create a voice in Eurorack is you would use a 1 volt per octave signal for your pitch and then a trigger or gate for your rhythm. And that's what I have set up on outputs two and three of shuttle control. On C on output three, I have a trigger, which doesn't isn't gonna be a whole all that useful going straight into our VCA, but we could use that to trigger an envelope, such as an envelope in maths, and then use that envelope to control our amplitude. And with this, in this case, we don't have control over the shape of the envelope from sensory percussion yet, but I do prefer using this technique because you can tailor the shape of the envelope more. For instance, on math, I really like this super exponential tight clicky response, which is one limitation of using the built-in envelope on shuttle control is that it's linear only, I believe. Where this whole workflow really starts coming alive is when you use, when you send CCs from sensory percussion out into the Eurorack. So we can use that on this next output channel four. I have a velocity CC coming out and we could simply patch that into the fall time on this envelope. So when we play soft, it's quiet, it's short. And then we play loud, it's longer. We could also go ahead and patch a uh, one volt per octave signal into our oscillator pitch. And I think I just have this set up to be uh, with my kick, it's an octave lower, and my snare, it's an octave higher. Starting to sound like music. If I split that, CC, I could use it for a lot of things, such as simultaneously controlling 
the length of the envelope and the filter cutoff. Using controllers from sensory percussion as control signals in Eurorack is very exciting. On output 9, I have a velocity trigger set up. I think this is a really special feature, especially in use with sensory percussion, because it's a really easy way to get dynamics into our patch. I'm going to switch maths over to the signal input, and now this rise-fall circuit becomes a slew limiter with rise time down and then fall time up somewhat. We're still controlling that from our velocity CC, by the way, which I'll, I guess I'll take that out for a second to, for clarity. The amplitude of this trigger is going to be scaled according to the velocity. And with this slew limiting setup, that means that this amplitude of our envelope is going to scale as well. We can bring back in the control over the fall time and the filter. Shuttle control also has built-in LFOs, which is really nice because that's another module you would have to buy otherwise. Um, I have an L I have a sine LFO coming out of output six, and I could patch that into the filter on our voice. We can control that rate with CC two, which I'm just moving with my mouse. Maybe I'll take down that modulation depth. And for why don't we go ahead and control that with velocity as well, just for kicks. And I'm not going to control the length of their envelope anymore with velocity, just for clarity. Really like those audio rate vibes. Probability triggers will increase the likelihood of a trigger coming through with velocity. This is a nice way to add some chance into the situation. If I play softly, notes don't come through all that often, but more likely as I play harder. On output seven, I have stored random voltage set up. This is a wonderful feature that, to quote the description, probability distribution is controlled by velocity. At low velocities, stored random voltages will be low magnitude. Increase of velocity, the distribution moves through the medium to high magnitude voltage probability. Because the distribution is scaled by velocity, think of it as a random source, while instead of being completely random, it does take your velocity into consideration. That doesn't mean it follows your velocity precisely. For instance, let's just AB that real quick. This is using filter, using velocity to control filter cutoff directly. This is using the stored random voltage. Pretty sweet. Another really special feature of shuttle control, at least in my opinion, is the ability to translate a CC into a bipolar signal. That means instead of going from 0 to 5 volts for 0 to 127 as the CC value, it goes from negative 5 to plus 5. 
having a bipolar source for modulation is going to create different results, but it, and in most cases it just depends on what kind of range you need. But there are some special things you can do with a bipolar signal, such as use it in a ring modulator. I'm going to use the second oscillator on the DFAM, which I have set to a really low pitch. You can literally see it oscillating if I put it in this molt. Uh, but if I pass that in as the signal into this ring mod circuit, and I use the bipolar control voltage from our velocity CC, I can use velocity to not only scale this LFO, but also invert it. And that might not sound meaningful. So just so you can see that better, I patched, I molted it, uh, and I'm going to patch. This is the LFO coming into the ring mod, and this is the LFO coming out. So if I play hard, the output looks like the input, but if I play soft, it actually inverts it, so it's going to be backwards. <laughs> Wrap, 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 wrap